In 2016, Kevin Durant joined the Warriors. Well, I'm viewing it as the weakest move I've ever seen from a superstar. But we're heading back in time and forcing Durant to stay in Oklahoma City. But this roster sucks outside of him and Russ, which means if they're gonna compete, they have to carry the team. And that's exactly what they did, leading to Russ winning MVP. But in this reality, KD was looking like a sidekick. 21 5 and 6 isn't terrible. But regardless of his status, the Thunder won 66 games and finished 2017 as the best team in the West. But in the second round against Minnesota, the Thunder looked like complete frauds. How are we down 3 ones to the Timberwolves? This team really isn't even that good. Game 5 started off well for the Thunder, but the game slowly turned the other way. No way we're losing to the Timberwolves, bro. But unfortunately, they were. And since we're ending after the 2024 season, this means he only has seven seasons remaining. We're also giving him a challenge just to win more championships with the Thunder than he did by leaving them. In the 2017 offseason, the Thunder picked up both Paul George and Carmelo Anthony. They now had four dominant scorers, but Durant became the main focus of the offense. And of course, this was the correct call since they finished with the best record in the West and he made all NBA first team. But he was injured when the team needed him most. There's no chance we lose him in Minnesota again, right? And while there certainly was a chance, the Thunder won game six by a single point. And now for a game seven. The Thunder have been without Durant all series, but they're now one stop away from advancing. Who was that guarding here, Raymond Felton? But the Wolves collapsed in this final play, giving their last shot to Taj Gibson. And while they did survive, it wouldn't be for long as things got troublesome in Houston. Bro, why can't we just win? Why are we down 3-0 to the Rockets? And while they technically weren't getting swept, they still lost this series in five games. KD didn't even play in the playoffs, he was injured still, so I guess he gets a pass for this season? Despite having a few shortcomings the previous two seasons, 2019 would be a year that Thunder fans would never forget. Get. They finished first in the Western Conference again, but this time they were making a deep playoff push. They started off by annihilating the Grizzlies, who wouldn't even get the chance to win a game. Next up was the Golden State Warriors, who originally had KD at this point in time, but now being against them, he wouldn't back down. By game four, the series was tied 2 to 2, and neither team was giving up. But then the Thunder won game 5 at home, followed by OKC spanking the Warriors on the road to get back to the conference finals. And here they were facing the Rockets, who had beat us last year. But this time they weren't as big of a threat, and we're gonna blow out the Rockets heading to KD's first NBA Finals. And in the Finals, we're facing the Boston Celtics, led by Kyrie Irving. And I originally thought they would be a problem, but after losing game 1, they went on to win game 2, then 3, then 4. We are now up 3-1 against the Celtics. But it wasn't over yet, as Boston was still showing some fight, and Al Horford even gamed us on this three. We're still up 3-2 though, and in game six, this is where the magic happened. Or should I say, the thunder. And KD is now an NBA champion. After 13 long seasons, with the team that took a chance on him in 07, he was finally bringing them a championship. But he'll be here a little longer, since he has to win two more trophies for this franchise. But even after winning a championship, Paul George will be heading home to play for the LA Clippers. Meanwhile, Russ isn't getting traded in this reality, meaning the Rockets keep the duo of James Harden and Chris Paul together, and Kyrie's all alone out in Brooklyn. KD now has one of three championships, and with Russ still on the team, they certainly have a large chance of going back to back. And with said chance, the Thunder didn't disappoint. Russ with another MVP. Somehow KD didn't even make all the NBA third team though, but I can't say how he didn't with these stats. Regardless of any accolades, we had to face Dallas in the first round. This should honestly be a pretty easy win. And easy it was since we swept the Mavericks. And in the second round, we're matching up against the Clippers. And here we have a chance to take revenge on Paul George for bailing after winning a title. This squad honestly isn't that bad. But when you win 73 games, it's hard for any team to compete with you. The Clippers had to find out the hard way though, since they were being eliminated after only winning a single game. And next up, we got Houston. But after game one, Chris Paul would be out with an injury. And without him, the Rockets just couldn't compete. The Thunder won this series in five games. Games, and they were heading back to the NBA Finals, where this time they were facing the Philadelphia 76ers, led by Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. But when one of your best players can't shoot to save his life, you stand no chance against a team with the greatest record of all time. Seeing the Thunder win the first trio of games made me pretty excited. Are we gonna sweep them in the finals? After a floater from KD and a knockdown three from Gallinari, my enthusiastic question was answered. KD now has two of the three championships he needs to complete our challenge, but here's where disaster strikes. Russ would be moving on from the team, meaning KD would be stuck with a young Shea and old Al Horford. And with Russ on a journey of his own, it was a disastrous season for KD. Luckily in the play-in against Dallas, we held our own, but there was still one more game if the Thunder were gonna make the playoff. 
Durant driving to the basket and knocks down the pull-up, but Steph comes down and makes this tough scoop layup, bringing the Warriors within four points. And then here we play amazing defense. They give the ball to Wiseman though, and he knocks down this tough mid-range shot. But the next play, KD finds space on the screen and pulls up a three, knocking it down, giving OKC a five-point lead. But of course, Steph responds with a bucket of his own. And the Thunder are not only up by three points, until Wiseman comes down and steals the ball from Shea, drawing the foul and hitting not one free throw, but both of them, drawing Golden State within one point. But KD finds his shooter, knocking down the three, and Steph is forced to make a play here, pulling up from three, and he misses, giving the Thunder two free throws and ultimately giving them the game. But now let's shift our focus towards LA. LeBron and AD had been killing it all season long, which was unfortunate for the Thunder, but didn't have the same star power to compete. And we're going home. 2022 would see a slight improvement to the team since the Thunder finished at the eighth seed. Shea was blossoming into a true young star and averaged 29 points a game alongside Katie's 30. But outside of these two, the team was still pretty young and they're still a few years away from being true contenders. In the moment though, they're facing the Pelicans, but Zion was having his way. He was dunking all over OKC, and pairing that with Ingram's lethal mid-range game only made it harder to guard. The Pelicans were advancing, giving the Thunder just one last chance to make the playoffs. They were now facing Sacramento, who were led by the young star duo of De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. And let's just say, they were too much to handle as well. KD and the Thunder were missing out in the playoffs, but just maybe this was for the best. They jumped up all the way to number two and selected a player that would speed up the rebuild. The Oklahoma City Thunder select Chet Holmgren. And Chet was an amazing pickup for the team. He provided both rim protection and floor spacing that was desperately needed by the Thunder. But by the All-Star break, the team was 11th in the West, and they weren't even on pace to make the playoffs. But then something clicked. KD and Shea locked in and turned OKC around, quickly becoming a true threat out West. They finished this season as the second seed, and Chet even won Rookie of the Year. It's now playoff time, and in the first round, we saw our matchup against Sacramento, where we absolutely dominated. We did the same to Memphis as we beat them in six, and now it was time to phase off against the Denver Nuggets. But things wouldn't go so well as Denver won the first two games of Oklahoma City. We did bounce back in game three with the win of our own, but that's about where the luck ended. The Nuggets won game four, and game five would be a rough one as well, resulting in a Denver takeover. Durant now just has one season left, and he's still missing ring number three. If he wins this year, there's no doubt that he retires the greatest Thunder player ever. But if he loses, I'll be deeming this challenge as a failure. And with the added pressure, Durant certainly stood up to the challenge. He averaged 27 points and helped guide the Thunder to 69 wins, leading the West by far. In the playoffs, they started by playing rookie sensation Victor Wimbanyama, who dragged the Spurs to the playoffs. But as exciting as it was to watch, it wouldn't be very competitive as OKC swept San Antonio and we're now moving on to Golden State. This series would be a bit more challenging since after winning game one at home, they split with the Warriors who won game two on the road. But after losing this game, OKC refused to do so again, packing up Curry and heading back to the Western Conference Finals. This time, they were playing the Dallas Mavericks and they would be the biggest challenge OKC had faced up until this point. The series would start fairly even, with both teams taking a win on the opponent's home court, stalling the series at two wins each. But it was game five where Dallas broke the ice. They were now up 3-2 and just one win away from beating KD in the Thunder. But Durant and Holmgren had other wise to say, as they carried the team in game six and then Shea stepped up in game seven, pushing OKC to the finals where they were now just four wins away from another title. And for KD, a chance to cement himself as one of the greatest of all time. But they were playing the Milwaukee Bucks, who had both Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo. And it's nowhere near easy beating a duo that both averaged 30 points in the regular season. But with the right start, maybe it wouldn't be as hard as we thought. The Thunder were up 2-0, but as I said before, it wouldn't be an easy task. In Milwaukee, the Bucks used home court advantage in their favor and tied the series heading back to OKC. But at home again, Oklahoma City separated themselves once again and won game five. And now just being one win away from completing our challenge, Kevin Durant went out down shot after shot, racking up 51 points and his third NBA championship. KD was now officially the greatest Thunder player of all time, but what if to Wimby, another player with all-time great potential, and put his career in new circumstances. Click here and let's follow his journey.